Hi, welcome back to UncoverFraud.com. My name is David Malamed, and I am a forensic accountant and fraud investigator uh, with over 20 years of experience. Before I begin, and today I'm going to be speaking about PPP loan fraud convictions. Um, but before I begin, please, if you do like the video, if you do like what it is that I have to say, please subscribe and like it below. It's really helpful for me. Thank you. Let's get into today's topic, which is Mo Fain is sentenced to seven and a half years for committing PPP loan fraud. Now, let me tell you, from the TV show Love and Hip Hop, the Atlanta star and rapper Mo Fain has been sentenced to, as I said, 17 and a half years in prison and has to pay back about $4.5 million in restitution for his role in a federal bank fraud. The 38-year-old reality TV personality pleaded guilty to six counts, including bank and wire fraud, after funding an over-the-top lifestyle during the pandemic with money from, from the Paycheck Protection Program. Now, what I'm telling you is an example of somebody, a, a quasi-celebrity with a few other businesses uh, who is convicted of fraud and sentenced to jail time. For those of you out there that are worrying about it, just take notice of what happened, of what it was that Mo actually did. And if there's anything that you need to seek legal counsel for or potentially report to the government. So the money was meant to be spent to help Mo's small business and his employees that were supposedly impacted by COVID-19. And it was really to keep their workers and to maintain payroll. Mo submitted a fraud of $3.7 million PPP loan applications. And it was falsely claiming for his employees for his trucking business called Flame Trucking. He said he had 107 employees and an average payroll monthly of about $1.5 million. Now, what did Mo actually do with the money? He used the money to buy $85,000 worth of jewelry, a $136,000 Rolls Royce. He used it to actually pay past due child support of $40,000 and $90,000 to start a new business in Atlanta. Now, Fain, he cut a plea deal with prosecutors who agreed to drop 14 other charges and recommended he spend 151 months behind bars. If he didn't make the plea deal, the reality star actually faced a 30-year sentence for making the false statement to a federally insured financial institution and money laundering in addition to wire fraud in connection with a Ponzi scheme. Now, I don't know if you remember, but Fain first made headlines when he was arrested back in May 2020 for the crime. He was indicted in Georgia by a federal grand jury a month later. Now, hearing what people are saying about Mo is that the Ponzi scheme involved him posing as the owner of Flaming Truck, a profitable trucking company, from August 2014 through to May 2020. However, here's the interesting part. The business never made enough money to cover its expenses. During that time, Fain supposedly managed to get 20 people to invest over $5 million in the company promising to use the money to purchase and operate his trucks. Instead, he used the money to pay his personal debts and expenses and to fund an extravagant lifestyle for himself. So Mo is no stranger to committing fraud. Fain transferred more than $5 million to a casino to cover his personal gambling and entertainment expenses among tens of thousands of dollars in cash withdrawals, custom-made jewelry, and child support. Now, one of the questions you may have is really what tipped off the government about the issues of Mo Fain's PPP loan. And Fain's loan spending 
Apparently, it raised the red flag at United Community Bank. Due to the way he structured those financial transactions to conceal or almost disguise the nature, location, source, ownership, and control of the proceeds. So when the bank asked for more information about Flame Trucking's finances, Fain allegedly sent October, November, December 2019 bank statements for Flaming Truck's account at Arvest Bank. But the authorities said that Arvest Bank had closed Flame Trucking's account in September 2019. So Fain was aware that those statements he sent to Mo claimed that he used the PPP loan to pay for the trucking company's payroll and other business expenses, denying that he'd used them for personal expenses. But during the investigation, the federal agents seized what they believed to be the proceeds of Fane's PPP bank fraud scheme. In the jewelry category, they seized a $3,700,000 diamond ring, a $24,000 diamond bracelet, and a $52,000 Rolex watch. They also seized money from him, including $617,000 from bank accounts, the Rolls Royce that was $136,000, and about $80,000 in cash that he had in his house. From Flaming Truck, they seized eight trucks and six refrigerated trailers. Thane, also known as Arkansas Mo, appeared in eight episodes of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. And while he was on the show, he was uh, engaged to Carly Red, who they appear to have split up since then. Now, this brings me back to what is it that the government is going to do? What is it that financial institutions are going to do to figure out if PPP loan fraud occurred and if you are the one who committed the fraud? The first is they're going to be looking for suspicious transactions. And really, it's a computer program with if-then statements that looks for unusual activity, unusual behavior. And what that does is it creates the red flags for a greater investigation, something to look more into. And that's exactly what they did here with Mo. If you are concerned that you have committed PPP loan fraud, I would go speak to a lawyer. The lawyer is probably going to give you advice. And if you are guilty, like Mo, potentially there is a plea bargain that you can get rather than 30 years in prison. I'm not saying that that will be the sentence for all of you out there, but you know, with such a large disbursement of PPP loans, there is countless numbers of frauds that are being brought to the attention of the public. Right now, larger numbers are being picked on, people who are known are being picked on, and it does not mean that it's the end. It means it's the beginning. So out there, I warn you, if you're concerned about PPP loan fraud, please seek counsel, potentially before speaking to the government and letting them know what has occurred. My name is David Malamed, and I am a forensic accountant and fraud investigation expert. To find out more about me and the services we offer, please visit uncoverfraud.com. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe this video. It really helps me out a lot. Thanks so much for listening and watching. Be good, be well. Until next time, God bless.